Okay, we're here with uh, Kalani Simeona um, doing a little interview about his uh, his career and how he got into it. Um, we had Kalani when he was a freshman, played football, um, played at Chinle High School. He's the one responsible for um, bringing all the equipment, the new equipment, into uh, the the, uh, the weight room at Chinle High School. So just a little interview. We're here in Las Vegas, so a uh, little bit of the background noise kind of messing messing it up. We're in a casino giving a little interview. Um, so let's give him a little feel for Kalani. Uh, go ahead and describe or introduce yourself, Kalani, where you're from and what you do for work. All right, so born and raised in Chinle, Arizona. Um, graduated 2011 and you no, know, I'm a strength and conditioning coach for BYU football. Yeah. Cool. So, so tell us about your, uh, your school and where you, uh, where you went to school from kindergarten to 12th grade. Oh yeah. So I went to, I went to kindergarten in Chinle back when the, the kindergarten was not like when the kindergarten was like in the administration building, like back in the day in Chinle. And then we went to the pink building at the elementary school in Chinle for all the old heads in Chinle. <laughs> Remember all the, the four buildings in the center with the with the cafeteria in the middle? Then the building's not even there anymore. It's like, um, it's where all the football fields are yeah. for the junior high. And then I went to Chinle Elementary School and then Chin Chinle Junior High, man, and then Chinle High School, man, man. I mean, I, mean, I bleed black and black and gold, and that's live and die at Chinle. Yeah. And then after that, I served a two-year mission for my church, and then after that, I um, I went to a junior college at Eastern Arizona, where I played two years of football, and then after two years of football. I decided I didn't want to play any longer. I wanted to be more serious about my academics. So instead of pursuing a football career, I just I went to BYU, where I had a had a full ride academic scholarship waiting for me. So regardless, I still went D1 in something. Yeah, and then I got my degree at BYU, and then I'm currently I'm almost done with my master's degree at Utah State right now. Cool. Yeah. All right. So so. Kalani, did you play any sports in uh, growing up as a kid? You know, uh, since you were young. And if you did, what sports did you play? Yeah, so that's actually kind of crazy. Like when I was um, when I was in junior high or in elementary school, I had a brother who passed away because he had a heart attack swimming. And so, like, I was super active and stuff. And then we all got checked out by a cardiologist, and this doctor told me that I couldn't play sports just just to be safe. Um, but I still stayed active, still stayed in the weight room, um, still did what I had to do to stay healthy. And it wasn't until like my freshman year I actually started playing sports. And so I played, um, I played football, like all I ever wanted to do was play football. So I played football in the fall and then I had one game. I, had, I played like for George LaFrance yeah. and the freshman team yeah. for one season. And like, honestly, I just like, we just screwed around and had fun on that team. And then, um, and then I, I, I did track and field, and all we did was screw around there too. Yeah. But after that, I went football, wrestling, and track every year. Mostly because when I was in high school, like I looked up to Ray Lewis like no other. And I remember reading stuff about Ray Lewis saying like, oh, wrestling's gonna make, like wrestling made him a better football player. So like I did whatever I had to do to become a better football player. And so I did wrestling for the rest three, the last three years of high school. And I think honestly that that changed that changed everything for me. I mean, I think it's more so like like learning how to push yourself, like pushing yourself hard, like like running fast, running hard, running far, and then pushing yourself by wrestling others like daily. I honestly, I mean, that's I think stuff like that's invaluable. Awesome, awesome. So uh, so when you got to uh, you know the varsity level, you know how how. 
how did you, uh, how did all playing those other sports make you a better player when you be, uh, became a varsity player and then when you became a college football player? Yeah, that's a really good question. So I'd say like varsity, like the big step in that's like mostly confidence, right? Like if you're confident in yourself, especially at a young age, if you're confident and you know your playbook, you know what you're supposed to do, you know what your coach is gonna tell you to do before he even tells you, then that'll take you a long ways. Like being honestly, being like obedient to honestly whatever they tell you to do and you're confident in that, I mean, you can't go wrong in like high school sports. And then just going full go, like, like you might be scared, like shitless, like in certain, cir in certain circumstances, but if you just go like full go and all out, you'll be fine. Whereas like, you can do the same thing in college, but you have to be more knowledgeable. You have to be, you have to be on your P's and Q's. You have to be able to push yourself in the weight room, in school, and then also go full go while you're at practice and then full go during the games as well. So practice how you play. Yeah, exactly, practice how you play. Same thing in the weight room, like you need to learn how to lift just as intensely as you would, as you would play in the game as well. Right. Yeah. So, so when you got to, uh, to EA and you played at Eastern for, for college, uh, what was your major? What you major in and uh, what made you choose that major? So uh, uh, EA was just a general studies. I just got, basically it's like a, um, like a general studies and science basically. Like I just took my, my generals within those two years and I just made sure I had good grades enough to, if God ever gave me the opportunity to go to any school, like. I wasn't gonna, my grades weren't gonna be a reason to keep me off from playing. Right. So the main goal was really just to, to get a degree, like yeah. an associate's degree straight up. Right. Yeah. All right, so once you got to uh, BYU, what, what, uh, what, what got you into your, your major and how, how, yeah. how did that go? So at BYU, I was um, exercise and science, an exercise and wellness degree. So all that is basically is all the exercise science classes without chemistry. That's like literally the only degree is and that led me to like everything like that led me to like basically being here in this degree because like you still took all your you still took all the exercise stuff like you took all your um like your exercise classes like learning how to program learning how to communicate learning how to uh, public speak and then just general organization yeah just like general organization like that type of stuff like um it made like the biggest deal, honestly. All right. So, and then I, I took an internship my last semester where I had to, um, I had to intern with um, anybody, honestly, and just get some hours. But I just didn't want to mail that internship in. And right. I would always tell my buddies, I'm like, man, I, I, I want to be a strength and conditioning coach. I just don't know if I could get an internship anywhere. Wow. Yeah. So how did you get that internship and who gave it to you? So. One of the strength coaches here, his name is Coach McClure. He's a um, he's an assistant strength coach um, under Coach Tafisi. And um, all I did was I emailed literally all the strength coaches in the state of Utah. So I emailed the Weber State, I emailed Utah, I emailed University uh, Utah State, and then I um, emailed Utah Valley, and then BYU as well. Um, and I literally just I shot my shot like. Yeah. I mean, it's like a shot in the dark. You don't know if they're gonna answer back or anything like that. But sure enough, Coach McClure, he hit me. It was funny, cause I was at work. This is like maybe two weeks. I already had an internship with BYU Wellness, but I would've been working with like just general, the general population of the student body. Right. So I would legit just be work, making like basic workouts for just normal students. Normal people, yeah. yeah. But I was like, I didn't want to do that but that was literally like just a backup plan because I was waiting for somebody to reply. And as soon as, um, I was funny, I was at work um, and I got, he called me, he's like, hey, I, um, Kalani, I just got your email. Um, how would you like to come in for an interview like as soon as possible? And oh, I'm sorry. Are you guys 21? Huh? Are yeah. you guys 21? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. So, I got that phone call like right before lunch. And as soon as I got that phone call, I legit like 
hung up the phone and I jumped in my car and I drove to the gym. Like, like legit, like I told my boss, I was like, hey, I'm stepping out real quick. I'll be back in like 30 minutes, like for a lunch. And within that lunch break, I had like a whole interview. I had like a presentation and everything. I didn't even get to eat that day. Like, I just remember like, this is my one chance I'm taking it, yeah. like a full go. So like, I legit like got into that. Um, I ran into the building. I was all dressed up in my, like my work clothes. Yeah. Like, and I was like freaking sweaty cause I ran in. <laughs> and then I sat down and like, we just chopped shop. And sure enough, he was like, well, if you want the internship, it's yours. Yeah. It's, it's yours already like that you, you came in, you hustled, like you pretty much gave up everything cool. to get here. Yeah. And that's how I got, that's how I got the internship. Cool. So, uh, so, so now that you got hired with uh, BYU, what's your work schedule like? And describe some of your job duties. Yeah. Dude, so I think we, strength and conditioning, it's not, it's one of the more, um, it's cool to say like you're a strength and conditioning coach, right? right? Especially on the college level. But it's a grind, dude. Like, it's not just all glitz and glamor, especially for a strength and conditioning coach. Like, we're, we're not just the people that push people back on the sideline and tell them to get back and whatnot. I mean, we, we, I work hands-on with the boys, like, legit, like, so in starting let's let's start in january so in january we're with the boys from as soon as they're done with class to about five o'clock so we get two and a half hours to train the boys every day for four days a week and on that fifth day we just give them like a like um like either a swimming session or a yoga session that could be on a wednesday or on a friday just depending on what we decide what to do right and then we'll we'll push hard from we'll have an hour of cardio and then an hour of hard lifting that's every for four days and then after that we'll go into a fall camp i mean sorry we'll go into spring ball where we're, we're there again with the boys from so we have a, we have a lift before every practice for 45 minutes then a two hour practice. And then even after that, if the boys want to get an extra lift in, we'll stay after that as well. So we're working anywhere between like eight to nine hours a day because the four hours before the boys come in, we're also having developmental squads where we have gray shirts that come in, they're getting extra lift in, all that type of stuff. And then after that, we'll go on and then we'll get our own lift in as well. You gotta practice what you preach, right? You can't not, right, right, can't right. not lift. Yeah. And then the same thing I say. Yeah, can't not lift. Um, so then after that, after that month, we'll go into um, our summer training sessions where we're just like, we have the boys like, we have like a 45 minute run to an hour and then like another hour to 45 minute um, lift as well. So we're pushing the boys constantly. And then they're in the summer times, like they're with us like legit all day. Like we'll start like this past this past year we started at um, seven in the morning so we had to get there at five set up the whole weight room make sure all the nutrition's all set up for them to partake after they're done and then once they're done make sure they get to eat all the food that we give them and then right back again groundhog's right, groundhog day where we have to repeat that another three four times within a week awesome, awesome. yeah and then and now we're in season now where we're with the boys from. We have we have two lifts. We have a lift in them right after lunch at one, where they lift for an hour, and then after that, um, the travel team lifts. I mean, at, at one, and then the developmental squad. So the guys who are red shirts or um, they're on scout team, they'll lift their own lift as well. Where nice. we'll push them just like it's the summertime. Oh, nice. Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah. So, so leading up to like um, you getting out of. Uh, like high school, did you have any other jobs or any other like um, like um, stuff you did on the side? You know, Dude, just, had... just just like uh, you know, of course this is for youth and we just you know you just can't. Some of these guys think they can just come straight up shot and be a boss somewhere. Oh. I mean, they gotta work their way up. Is there any other jobs that you did that you know that um, I you had, did before? I had hella jobs, dude. Like yeah, like when like I had so when I was in junior high when the wildcat den just opened they had like i think they probably still have like ody right and they had like the odd those like summer jobs yeah 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 i remember i i would work with um 
the guys who work in the den and yeah. we'd have to sweep and we'd have to wipe down all the seats in the den yeah. we'd have to clean the restrooms i was working like eight hours for like four five days straight and then after that we'd go to the wellness center and then we'd lift after that as right. well so then after that then we would work i would work every summer after that i would work every summer bailing hay with my friends and their their hay come like their hay company right. so not only about like after that i was lifting 100 pound bales like yeah get throw them on people's trucks tying them down so like and then in school like when i was at ea i was a volunteer athletic trainer so i learned how to stretch and i learned basic body mechanics and stuff like that right. and i worked for free doing that and then they gave me like a student job where i was getting paid like five bucks an hour and like it was like 15 bucks a day basically yeah but like that got me through that helped me pay rent and then I got to BYU and I worked in a call center. I worked in um, a warehouse. I like box things. You know what's crazy is when I was an intern, this is like, I think people need to hear this because when I was an intern, I still had to go to school in the morning. I interned from 12 to six. Yeah. This is for free. I'm not even getting paid. Right. And then from six, as soon as I was done with the internship, I would run to McDonald's, I get a McDouble, because it's only like a dollar fifty. Yeah. <laughs> and then I would go straight back to work at the warehouse I was at before. And I'd work there from six to 12. This is legit every day yeah. for like a whole six six to 12, like six to eight months I was doing this. So like, if you want to do something, it's going to suck. Yeah. Like if you have a dream, it's going to suck. Yeah. If you want a cool job, it's going to suck. Like because now like after the like all that um I was like one of the only I think I'm the only intern they've ever had where like I was a student intern and then I volunteered and then they hired me on. Yeah. Like I don't think that's ever happened at BYU. Like wow. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, like, if you want to do something, if you want to, if you want to dream or you want to have a cool job, it's gonna suck at first. Yeah. Cool. So, so, you know, you you told us about a little bit about uh, what you were told, you know, growing up about how you would you were told you were you were able to play sports. You know, tell us about that story, and then like, um, like, uh, like all the way through up to your your getting out of high school, playing football, and how that helped you. Uh, to uh, play at EA. Yeah. So this is, this is a cool story too because this like literally leads me up to the job I have now because um, when I was in fifth grade, they told me I might possibly have like, they call it cardiomyopathy, which yeah. is like the, the, the wall in between the chambers of your heart is too thick, right? Yeah. So you're not able to pump enough blood into each chamber right. and out. Um, so they were worried that I would develop that. So they just thought it'd be a good idea to hold me out for like three, four or five years. So er, legit every five years I'd go, the doctor would tell me like, I'm still not sure. And I go home and I cry. And like, it was like legit every five, like every year I would go through this. So finally coming in from junior high to high school, I got the, um, I remember I would just go to the weight room like legit every day. And I would have like the mindset, like I'm benching or I'm like squatting or whatever. I'm just like, all right, if I die, I die. <laughs> like, I'm just gonna freaking work hard. And like at this point, cause what, what else is it? Like I, how I thought of it was like, I can't play sports and I won't be able to do the job I want to have. Like, what's the point of like all this? And I might as well just go out and do something that I like, love to do. And so I legit just push myself in the weight room legit from eighth grade to junior high i mean eighth grade to um, ninth grade i was in the weight room like constantly it's fun from my house to the wellness center is like exactly a mile yeah so like i would run that every day up the hill and back down and um and i would lift hard as well and i i felt like i didn't miss a day i probably did but it felt like i didn't yeah. but i was there like constantly and I even have my brother go. I, I take my friends and stuff like that. Yeah. And um, sure enough, like when the the doctor came and when I had the doctor's visit from ninth from eighth to ninth grade, the doctor looked at my heart and he's like, "This is freaking crazy because there's like I see no there's like I see no issue whatsoever. Like it's almost as if there was no history of yeah. me ever having like a heart issue. Yeah. And I was like, he's like, "What have you been doing differently?" I was like, "Well." All I've been doing is I've been lifting and I've been running. <laughs> like, and he's like, oh, you're not you're supposed to be doing that. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, well, I did it anyways. 
And sure, sure enough, he was like, well, there is studies that says like people who have cardiomyopathy, if they were to um, lift and they were to run, like it would, it could possibly help like decrease that wall. So I was yeah. like, all right, cool. And so he released me to play. And dude, after that, it was like all gung ho. Like, like I was just all in, like no matter what. Cause I had it taken away from me. Yeah. What's, what's the chance of it being taken away again? Pretty high, like it's the likelihood of it's high. And so you might as well just go all out. Yeah. Like I have a younger brother, Kikoa. I mean, yep. he, he can't, he can't yep. play football. He can't play basketball, but yep. he's like the biggest, he's the biggest yep. Chinley Wildcats fan, the biggest Cowboys fan. Like yep. he loves sports. So if you're playing sports and you're not going all out, you're taking that all for granted because somebody out there can't. Right, Somebody's right, out there, right. he's, they're watching you and they wish they could do what you could do. Yeah. And and when honestly when I see that and kids like they half they half ass their exercises, they half ass their workouts, they half ass their play, like that breaks my heart because yeah. there's somebody that's watching you at any moment that can't do what the that can't do what you can do right. you might have a relative in a like in a wheelchair or that might be brain damaged or has right. special needs right. yep. those people would die for the opportunity to just use their yeah. body yeah yeah and so i always thought that like i had that opportunity to be that person for like five six years and now i'm giving the opportunity to not be that person and i can do whatever I want to do. Hell yeah, I'm gonna take that opportunity to be whoever I want to be. Yeah. I'll, I'm gonna push myself to be the best, the best person, best person I could possibly be. Yeah. And like I honestly credit that to to my younger brother, and then to also just the weight room. That's yeah. I literally like. I think this is like um, me giving 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 back to my community. That's why it's it was a no brainer for me to to be like oh. If somebody needs a weight room, boom, Chinley High School. Like, that was a no-brainer to me. Because there's schools out there that have that type of weight room. Mm -hmm. Now, it's our it's our responsibility to get those our kids to, to be tough enough to use the weight room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, like, like, that story, I think, honestly, for me, like, that'll be the preface and the epilogue to my life story. Like, yeah. like, that changed my life for sure. All right, cool, cool. So those, those are all really good words that you spoke, you know. I mean, within that, that could be like uh, some of the words of encouragement that you gave to everybody. But do you have any other words of encouragement for the youth, you know? Everything you said is all good and everything that, you know, that I think the youth should be uh, listening to and what they should hear, I mean. Um, you know, there's there's any other words for you to give out to our people. I was talking to my dad the other day, and um, he's telling me about how they had games canceled because the great check, yeah, like against Winslow. And I was like, Dad, that blows my mind that you could be on great check. Everybody be on great check, or a lot of people be on great check. Not enough people to play a game. Yeah, it's a child's game. Um, but it blows my mind because, like this, like this opportunity. Like, this is an opportunity you can't waste. A lot of these kids, like, it might be their only time they ever play football in their life. It might be their only time they play basketball in their life. And they're going to blow it because there's two, there's, two, there's two things they're not willing to do. Be nice to their teachers and do the work that they ask you to do. There's literally only two things you have to do. And those two things are going to help you be an adult. Is by being nice to other people and just doing what they tell you to do. Like, if you were literally just did the work they told you to do and you were nice to them, they're probably going to give you a D instead of an F yeah. plus, yeah. you know? And if they like you, they're going to work their tail off to make sure you pass. Yeah. These teachers don't want you to fail because right. if you fail, it looks bad yeah, on them. Yeah. Like, and that's honestly like the biggest takeaway I had. This is it's the same in, at EA. It was the same at BYU. It's the same in my master's classes. It's the same with my bosses now. It's the same with every other boss I've ever had. Is if I was just nice to them and I did exactly what they told me to do, I'd be straight. Like, and that's how, that's how I've always attacked it. Like, sure, you're gonna have people that you don't get along with that work. 
Right. But I yeah. think, I believe in karma, if you're able to just be nice to them, regardless if they're being mean to you or intensely mean to you, then it's going to work out in your favor in the long run. Yeah. Yeah. Like, honestly, the only thing I, I would tell my, my nephews, my nieces, even the kids in high school right now is just just be a good person just be nice to your teachers be nice to your leaders and then be nice and then be good enough to just do the work that they give you right i mean if you have trouble don't be scared to ask for help mm -hmm. there's no shame there's no shame in asking for help you go to college there's tutors everywhere literally everybody asks you to they say use me please use me i right. want to be i want to help you be tutored right like it's honestly like just don't be don't be so hard-headed where um you ruin your career you ruin your life over it just right, right. just cool. bite the bullet and be nice be a good person cool. all right cool. well thanks kalani you know thanks for everything that you've done you know uh, i enjoyed coaching you when you were at chinley you yeah. know remember you coming in as a really slow uh chunky ninth grader and well, i'm still slow I'm still and chunky. uh and uh you know so Kalani, you know, Kalani had a really good coach um, his senior year was Coach Sui Sui. And he always told him, you know, be humble about everything that comes in your life, you know, don't don't put it out there. That's the same thing Kalani's uh, still doing. Um, and uh, that's that's one thing that led him to being, you know, uh, and he, he won't say it, but I'll tell you, he was a 3A North uh, Defensive Player of the Year his senior year. And, um, that uh that 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 just shows you know how his hard work paid off and you know it's still paying off and how he's uh keeping his education going and you know how many how many native uh uh strength trainers are there at, at the d1 college level i mean byu is one of the best teams in the country i mean i'll say it. i mean they're they, they were undefeated last year um the COVID year and you know they only lost one game that was the last game they played like legit like this much yeah we lost it by this much yeah and and and, and i believe if they had number 13 in there they would they would won <laughs> but um you know um but it's good to see kalani doing his thing you know local boy chinley high school uh not from the navajo nation you know this is something that hopefully you guys all take into account of uh how to you know get get going in in uh, your your career if you so to choose this I mean, everything you work for is a good thing that'll come in at the end. Um, so with that, uh, it's game day for for Kalani here at uh, in Vegas. They're playing against, you know, the real school. <laughs> so so you know, um, see, watch for Kalani on the sidelines. He's always there. You know, he's right there by the other Kalani, the the head coach. Um, you know, he's not just a get back coach. I always see him out there. And, you know, that's that's. One of the reasons why, you know, BYU was my, my team to watch last year. Um, I watched them in uh, U of A. But um, uh, thank you, Kalani, for, for your words. And, you know, I hope everybody takes into account, you know, this is not just coming from us as a coach or coming from me as a coach and from my old dude, but Kalani, you know, is still working. And like I said, you know, I still take classes and try to get, get you know, get something, learn something new every day. So um, thank you, Kalani, you know, yep. good luck tonight. Um, um, hopefully we, we win, not you. <laughs> <laughs> but um, we, um, by the time this comes out, we'll see who came out on top, okay? Yeah. Coops. So, Go Coops, baby. Go Coops. <laughs> yeah, bear down. All right, have a good one, guys. I got you. Okay, so one thing that we forgot to mention is that Kalani worked with the... the um, number two draft pick. Number two draft pick. He's playing for the Jets right now. Um, what was his name? Zach Wilson. <laughs> Zach Wilson is his name, you know, number two draft pick, uh, playing for the uh, Jets right now. Uh, who else did you, do you have? Um, so there's Zach Wilson, who's with the Jets. There's um, Kyrus Tonga, who plays for the oh, yeah, Chicago yeah. Bears yeah. right now. I like watching him. Yeah, he's the starting nose tackle right he's now. He's a starter? Yeah, he's a starter now. And then we have a couple more guys. We have Matt Bushman, who's with the Raiders. He's a tight end. Um, that that uh, Mill Mill. We have Mill, Dax Mill. He's yeah. a wide receiver. He was a walk on too, wasn't he? So yeah, Dax Mill. Dax Mill was a, a walk on. He started his first year. He started basically three years straight. 
and then he got drafted in the seventh round, and then he just made the 53-man roster. So he'll be like probably like the third string slot wide receiver or whatever for the Raiders. I mean for the Reds or the, for the Washington team. Yeah. Yeah. And then last year we had so we had a total of five guys get drafted last year from BYU. And then we had um so there was Zach, there was Brady Christensen, who's the right tackle for the Panthers right now, um, as a rookie. And then there's um Kyrus Tonga, starting nose tackle. And then there's Dax, who just made the roster. And now there's Chris Wilcox, who was drafted by the Bucks, who's on the practice squad for the Colts right now. Cool, cool. And then we have um, we have a couple more guys who are just practice squad guys, who are like Matt Bushman plays for the Raiders. There's um there's um who else is there? Oh, Zane Anderson, who plays for the Chiefs. He's a practice squad guy. Um, there's Troy Warner, who's the uh, the brother of Fred Warner. He's, uh, he's on practice squad for the Bucks right now as a safety. And then on top of that, um, all the guys who are in the NFL right now, they come back in the off season and they train with us, us right. coaches. So Taysom, Taysom Hill, he'll come back and he'll train with the coaches still with us to this day. And then um, Kyrus, when he's coming back, he'll lift with us. Zach, he'll come back and lift with us. There's a lot of dudes. So they might be pros, they might be making their money right now, but they still come in, they still get that work. It doesn't matter if they're getting their millionaires or not right now. Like even Fred, Fred will come back and he'll lift. Fred Warner, probably the probably the best, if if not the second best, like inside linebacker in the nation. Yeah, yeah. Like also was with us. So and keep a lookout. There's a couple guys right now at BYU who um, who will probably get drafted again this year. Like the, there's a running back. Tyler Algier, there's yeah, two linebackers, tough. there's Kate Pe Keenan Peely, Payne Wilgar, and then even Isaac Rex, who's the, the tight end right now. Yes, cool, cool. So there's a lot of dudes right now. I mean, there's no secret to it. It's just training hard. Those, those are the guys who are pros right now are always the hardest guys. Those, they're always the hardest working guys in the room. Yeah. No secret to it. Yeah. Same thing your dad tells us, you know, tells the kids right now, you know. They're the hardest working dudes out there, you know. He, he tells the same stories that he, he uh, that you tell him, he tells the boys. That's, those are the hardest working dudes that, that are out there, you know. It's yeah. hard to get them out of the weight room and hard to get them, get them uh, to stop. But yeah. um, that's one thing that, um, you know, that, that your dad tells them all the time. So, so you guys, you know, you guys got to work hard if you want to make it to that level. You know, it's not it's not gonna be easy like like uh, Coach Kalani said. You know, not easy. So thank you for watching, and hopefully you get a lot of info from from this uh, interview. Thank you again for watching, guys. Um, you can reach Kalani at um, Kalani Simeona on Instagram and you can find him on Facebook. If you guys have any questions or any jobs that you want to know about, any interviews about, any um, careers you want to know about, uh, let me know. I can be reached at LJ35.25 on Instagram or you can leave a comment down below. Thanks for watching again.